imagine this. You're slathering on your SPF 50 sunscreen, headed out into the blistering sun, thinking, hmm, you're safe. Now imagine that same sunscreen only gives you an SPF protection of four. Yeah, that actually happened. Welcome to Not The Burn You Expected, where we dive into a shocking sunscreen scandal that's got Australia and your summer beach plants sizzling for all the wrong reasons. However, before I continue with this particular video, we realize that most of you are not subscribed to the channel. So if you wouldn't mind, just hit that subscribe button. It will help push more videos like this to someone like yourself. Now, in June 2025, Australia's consumer watchdog Choice dropped a major bombshell. They tested 20 popular sunscreen, household brands, big names, supermarket darlings, and out of 20 that they tested, 16 of them failed to deliver the SPF which is written on their labels. We are talking products labeled as SPF 50, actually scoring SPF 26, 28, and in one particular case, SPF 4. Now that's not some protection, that's just coconut oil with a huge ambition. The worst offenders, Ultraviolet's Lean Sunscreen SPF 50, a high-end zinc-based sunscreen that retails for 50 bucks a tube. Choices Lab found it tested at SPF 4. Now they double-checked it again and it went up to a glorious SPF 5. But Ultraviolet wasn't having it, they clapped back hard. The brand called the results scientifically impossible, claiming that the formula contains more than 22% zinc oxide. And with that much active ingredients, SPF 4 is like saying bottled water causes dehydration. Ultraviolet even retested the product independently and got an SPF of 61.7. So who's lying? Or is something else fishy going on? Now, let's get nerdy about SPF testing. SPF isn't just a made-up name, it's actually tested in a lab. Scientists typically smear sunscreen on 10 humans, shine artificial UV light on their backs, and see how long it takes for the skin to burn. Yeah, people actually sign up for, for their particular job. SPF is calculated by comparing the time it takes to burn with and without sunscreen. If your unprotected skin burns at 10 minutes, but the protected skin burns in 300, congratulations, that is SPF 30. Now, the global gold standard is ISO 24444, used in Australia, Europe, and in the UK. But here's the catch. It's human testing. Different labs, different skin types, and different changes in light intensity. And boom, results can vary. So why did Choice get an SPF of 4, while Ultraviolet got an SPF of 61? Well, both followed the same standards, but tested in different labs, different volunteers, and potentially even different application techniques. And all these can make a huge difference. Choice blind tested all the products, putting them in amber jars with no labels to avoid biasness. Ultraviolet says there could have been a sample mix-up or degradation of their products. Now, Choice stands by its results. So currently, we are in a corporate slap fight, whereby one side says you are deceiving consumers, and the other side says no, you are the ones who are deceiving consumers. Now, we, meanwhile, we are here sitting in the middle, oof, can someone just protect me? And it's not just Ultraviolet. 16 products failed, including big names like Banana Boat, Nivea, Bondi Sands, and even Cancer Council. Some tested in the SPF 20s, one had an SPF 28 instead of SPF 50. Now that's like being promised a Tesla but being delivered a tricycle. But here's the twist. Every brand denied the results. All of them submitted their own tests, all of them claiming compliance. In some cases, like Woolsworth, their independent lab found SPF 68 for the same batch that Choice has found an SPF of 27. Which means we are either living in a multiverse or lab testing isn't as bulletproof as we thought. If both sides has science on their side, now what's left for us? Vibes? Enter the TGA, Australia's sunscreen watchdog. They're now investigating the findings along with the ACCC. So far, no products have been recalled, banned, or even repackaged. Why? Because the system largely trusts companies to test their own sunscreens before listing and selling them. And while this works for 99% of the time, this particular condition might be just the 1%. The TGA confirmed that SPF testing can vary because of human responses differ dramatically. Now, the US FDA treats sunscreen as a drug. The EU treats it as a cosmetic. And in Australia, it's known as a therapeutic good, just like Panadol. So Aussie sunscreens are heavily regulated on paper. 
But in practice, the same honor system, brands test their own products, submit the paperwork, and regulators assume compliance unless someone blows the whistle, just like Choice did. So yes, the SPF on your label might depend more on the lab they hired than the lotion itself. So what should you do? First, you should keep using your sunscreen. Secondly, choose products with a good track record. And third of all, apply enough sunscreen. Most people don't. And maybe, just maybe, follow the four sunscreens that actually pass Choices tests. The first is La Roche-Posay. Second is Neutrogena Ultra Sheer. Third is Mecca Cosmetic. And fourth is Cancer Council Kids. But more importantly, this kind of shows how much we assume labels equals the truth. Now, maybe it's time to get sunscreen testing a little bit less subjective. Because when the summer sun hits and it's trying to roast you like a rotisserie chicken, you don't want probably SPF 50. You actually want the SPF 50. Stay safe, stay skeptical, and don't pay 50 bucks for an SPF 4.